Alright guys, Scully here. Time to do the review on the DM. So also, you know, I got this in a raffle for 20 bucks. Um, supposedly, this, game, this uh, gun came straight from the Taiwan factory to World Cup and then came straight to my pro shop. So this never, ever even saw Dai's factory at all. So it never got quality controlled or anything. So a lot of the things that I have been complaining about online that you guys saw in the forums was this thing had never been even tuned or got quality controlled. But still, um, that doesn't count for the grips. Um, because that one was a defect. Um, they, they were just defective. They didn't have enough rubber. So it comes with just this normal kind of cardboard cover. Shells, all the regular ones, and the PGA colors, and then serial number and barcode. Pretty much just throw it away and whatever. And you have your die case. Um, this very dark stuff is, uh, I think, leather. I can't tell if it's real or not. It's got the die logo, die name, their website. Flip it over, same thing. Uh, overall, when I got the case, this handle, you, you, you can't, you can get one finger in there. That's that's it. I wasn't too impressed with the handle. Um, I just. I don't know, maybe after a while it'll loosen up, the case will break in. I know when I got it, it was very hard to uh, close. Other than that, the stitching is really good quality. Um, zippers, very heavy duty. I mean, you got huge, huge zippers. Um, it has defects, I really haven't noticed anything. Um, to open the case, let's just open it up. One thing I don't like about it is, is when you open up, it don't open up. You kind of just have to deal with this. So you hold it open, pull it off. Um, it does have some padding in there, which is good, so it will protect your gun. Um, this gun barely fits in here. Barely. I mean, it's pushing the case open. There is padding around the edge. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's padding right here, so it will protect the side of your gun. Um, we'll get to the gun in a second. We're just kind of do a review of the case. It does have straps on it, which is nice. It keeps your gun in place. You don't really have to use them, because, again, this case is kind of holding it in. Um, you got compartments. It does have a Velcro to keep this from flapping back and forth. You got your other side and then the other side. Um, and again, like I said, it's the case closes. It just does not want to stay open. I don't know after a while if breaking in it will do that, but by doing this you can see it's pulling this away from each other, so I'm going to say no. Alright, let's start with the tools. Not very fond of this toolkit. Um, I was having problems with this thing is like super tight to use, to try to use any tools. Um, I mean, it's a nice toolkit. I mean, you got your o ring picks, um, you got a knife right here. This is your knife. Open that. You got a knife, so in case you gotta open something or cut someone, I don't know. Um, I don't remember reading what the tool this one was for. Um, I'll have to read back later and post on the forum. You got a Phillips screwdriver, can opener. This tool is specifically designed for this ASA to go inside of it and remove um, the cap or something. And then a Phillips screwdriver. Um, why I don't like this toolkit? Because these things always poke you. And I've had one friend already poke himself, and he's like, "No, I don't like this." Um, but other than that, you know, you don't got you don't got your ball end tools. 
And that's one thing I wish die would do is ball end tools. Um, there's certain tr adjustments on the trigger in here to adjust the rake of the trigger and then there's a spring tension on here. Um, you can't get the tools in here no matter what because this toolkit is so bulky you need individuals so I have to pull out my Plan Eclipse tools to get into there. Um, I don't know if you can, guys can see but that one special tool I was talking about was to take out that piece. Um, I really haven't gotten into the ASA. I'm not going to because this gun is being sold for a 3.1. Um, just waiting for the stock to come in or the shipment of it to come in and yeah um, I will be getting I don't know if I'm going to say this right Kryptonic Ice Kryptonite however you say that that will be the colors I will be getting um, so back to the gun um, you got your normal dye lube stick lube very good lube um, I would say up there with Planet Eclipse not too bad You got your die parts kit, you got your o-rings, some grip screws, um, springs, set screws for the triggers in case they get lost, um, detents, Let's see what else, that was about it. Good parts kit, I did have one part that was broken which I will try to show you guys. These straps will kind of stretch out and eventually stuff will be easier to open. Um, you got your sticker, your warranty card, your manual, and your barrel sock. Yes, you buy a $1,600 gun and this is the barrel sock you get. I was like, what? Um, so yeah, the die manual, I was not very impressed. I think they could do a lot more tuning on it. They, they tell you the settings first, and then at the end of it, after they tell you everything, then they tell you how to actually set the gun. So when you go, all right, so you're first learning it, it's like, all right, so I go this, and then I go back to here, but then what do I do? And then you got to keep flipping back and forth. Um, you know, feed neck, it tells you how to take the grips off, adjust the trigger, it shows you the bolt, um, O-rings, more of the bolts, LPR, um, this is the, this is one thing I was, was, I had to figure out on my own. It did tell you how to take the grip off on the front reg to get the LPR out. Um, I had to go on YouTube and figure that out, which I wasn't too happy about. Um, die doesn't have, like Planet Eclipse, where, say, you adjust your reg and you have to clean, you know, things out and adjust the sets, you know, the velocity. There is no stock settings. There's no, like, what was it, for Planet Eclipse, it's like two and a half turns. So you you see so you flush the, the 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 velocity with the regulator and turn it two and a half turns in and then you're done. They don't have that. Um, I pipe tools and see again the tool I was talking about and the warranty and then uh, ex ex exploded display. Um, let's see what else. The barrel. I find the barrel is very nice. The anodizing on it is pretty awesome. Um, I'm very impressed with the anodizing on it. Um, I do find it kind of, it's a little chunky. It's a little, little heavy. Um, but it, it's just mirror. I mean mirror on the inside. I don't know 
I don't even know if that'll come out, so <laughs> just work with me. Let's see. I mean, it's just mirror. I would say that has the best. Let me pull the ether. That bore does the bore the back on that does bore out at a six eight nine as I was told. I don't know. Um, this is an Ethos barrel. So I mean they're about the same quality, but um, I would say I'm just guessing here. If I had a scale, I could tell you exactly. They almost feel about even, but I do find that the more expensive barrels, like for the GO3s, are a little bit lighter than the Etha barrels. Um, the Etha barrels do, just for reference, bore it at 693. Um, it's very loud. Um, originally, when I had this gun, I part of it was because the LPR and the HPR weren't tuned. Um, so when I had this on and it went from like my deadly wind barrel, it does quiet it, but it still it wasn't that bad. It's got it's got very good porting, even more porting on top. Um, I mean it feels sturdy. You know, there's a lot of metal on the barrel. You can kind of see It's a good transition from coming here to over to the the gap between the barrels, so that's nice. This one's just a little dusty, but yeah. Um, to the gun. I'm not gonna break it down. I mean, if you guys really, really want me to, I can break it down and show you the different parts. But otherwise, I really don't want to because I'm gonna be selling it soon, and I just don't want to deal with breaking an O-ring or whatnot. So this is the gun. Um, air runs up through the ASA. I'm not sure exactly how where it runs, but I'm just going to kind of give an example. It runs up, comes through the body, comes down through the rig, comes back up, and then comes back here and somewhere back here. Um, as you can see, the anode is very amazing on this. I would say that's one good quality that I wish Planet Eclipse could have awesome animals like this and just come up with that designs. Um, the, the camera just won't do good. You have to see these things in person if you have it. Um, the quick bolt removal system, very simple, just a push button here. If this button does get dirt or something stuck in there, if you guys can see, there's a little hole right there. You can put an Allen key in there, and what that'll do is it'll, it's like a little Allen set screw. That'll come out, and you can just pull the bolt out without having to, um, without having to fight it. So simple, pretty much just push it in. Um, these do kind of just get stuck in there, so you kind of have to wiggle it back and forth, and then it just pulls right out. I don't know anything about dies, bolt systems, or how they've changed, evolved, so I can't say very much. Um, it's very simple, I guess. Um, I don't. I'm still kind of understanding how they work, but I guess they kind of work in the same aspect as a Lux. Um, take this off. So when I got this bolt, what I was complaining about for the people that were wondering, so this back cap comes off. Um, I don't know if this will come off, but I'm guessing because there's an Allen key slot here, this will. And I'm guessing when you screw this off, this portion just pops off and there's a spring back there. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not going to take it off because I'm going to be selling it. Front can comes off. And then the bolt comes out. Um, this O-ring just acts as a squeegee um, for the I-pipe, which I will show in a second. 
But when I got this bolt, this front o-ring, half of it, literally half of it was gone. It wasn't even in the gun. It wasn't in here bouncing around nowhere. It was gone. And luckily, I had didn't. I only shot a hopper through it, so it didn't do like no damage. Um. So yeah. So I wasn't too very happy with that. Um, but for assembly, it's very simple. Uh, mainly, you just lube these O-rings. These are rings. There's an O-ring in here. There's an O-ring right there. I'm sorry if I'm not pointing them out correctly enough. Let me go over that again. There's an O-ring right in there. You can see it's orange. These O-rings are color coded, which is cool. I do know our sponsor ANS does sell kits now that are color coded. They're a little bit more expensive, but if you just want to go, oh, it's that color. There you go. Uh, O-ring right in there, and then there's one right there. So simple, just put the bolt back on, that back on, that back on. These edges are sharp right here, so do be careful. That's one thing I don't like, I wish they would like put them into one of those vibrating sanders that they have with like the rocks or whatever, I can't remember what the ones were called. And then simply you can just you can just push it in and then there's like a little beveled edge that will push this over. But I figured, you know, after a while doing that, you're gonna wear it out. So you might as well just push the button. You know, keep the gun looking good. The clamping feed neck, um it's good. It clamps. Nothing much. This one's got slit style design instead of like the PE where it's just the clamping style. Uh, wasn't doing any damage to my rotor. Um, let's see. The grips. No, let's do the ASA first. Then we'll go to the grips, trigger, this fun thing, and I think that will conclude it. So, the ASA. I hate this ASA. I'm sorry, but they need to redesign this lever. It's fine when you get up to here, but when you lose all this force, or your, your you know, a portion where you can grip onto it, you j it's just too hard to push. And we had two shims when we had test fired it, and you get to right about here. There's a little, there's a little nub right there, because it'll go over the point and it just keeps it locked. But when you get to that point, you really don't have much to push, and you really don't have much to kind of come up here. Especially in winter, if you play winter games, and it's five below out, which it's five below out right now in Minnesota, <laughs> you, I, you just, I don't think you could do it. But I mean, once you get it past there, you, then you're fine. Um, I, I think they just need to redesign the lever. Um, oh, and then this turning on system. Um, if, if I'm with air, if you do air this up and pull this, the bolt out, it will, air will come out, but they say when it gets to, if you let it go, this will shoot out, but once it gets to here, because there's nothing really creating a vacuum, then it'll, um, it'll vent. It'll just shoot air out so you should be fine um i am going to conclude for right now because i don't know my limits on time for videos on youtube so we will be right back